Bows. 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 Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' hey, do check it, it how you check it. This is unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the official Miss Jamaica. Well, go on. Say, man, my guy's back, man. You know, it's crazy, man. I, I, when I started this podcast, I knew I was going to be the only one, you know, with the award ceremonies. I Definitely. wanted to do something for people while we had the ability to do it. God has blessed us where we could bless others. Definitely. And this guy certainly deserved it. It don't even seem right to even do it with other people if you ain't did it with him. You appreciate know what I'm saying? Appreciate the it. The work that you put in, man. Me and my wife, my wife's like, you getting, what What you doing? You, you, I said, yeah, he getting an award. I got to get him <laughs> back on the show. And I wish I'd had it when you first came. Nah, it's all good, bro. But, you know, I'm I'm from the Grove, so I'm like right down the street, man. I'm here. I'm ready. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm going to call you Mr. Handcuff, bro. Yeah. You you trying to tell your beautiful wife, man, you put your hat on. Nah, man, let her do what she want to do, bro. Just because no. you wearing a hat, bro. Nah, bro. No, I didn't she got that man. natural beauty. You trying to cover I'm, I'm her with pretty, that hat. I, I'm pretty. Hey, man, I'm pretty lenient on her. I just messing nah, with her. Nah, man. I don't mess I don't with know, her. No, man. Say, man, look, man. You know, been 18 the, I, years, man. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. Hey, you, man. I, you know what? I'm not going to say what I'm going to say because I don't want to jinx nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you say, just better be careful, bro. I'm trying. Man. You better be careful, bro. I'm she, trying. She's a keeper for life. Say, bro. man, it's been a long time coming. That girl over there, she's watching I, us. I see her. She over there. She's smart. 15 and dry. Driving. Straight A's. I'm scared. Straight bro. A's. Straight A's. That's even better. In all gifted classes, man, it's going down, man. That's where. That's what I'm. Ho- that's what I hope for my son, man. Say, man. I, I always want them to do the best. You it's, know it, it, that's our. That's our heartbeat, that's all right? You can ask for. Yeah. That's yeah. our heartbeat. Like that's what keep the things going, man. We try to make sure our, our children. We got a 13 year old too. I know you got it. You got a couple. So. I got 14, 22, and 29. Yeah, I'm way up there too. I got 20. And grandbabies. What? One grandson. He, he'll be three. June seventeenth, he'll be three. three. You have a lot of boys. You know what I'm saying? I'm, try, I, <laughs> like he, I'm trying to put that Lopez you know, out for life. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We, we just took a picture a couple years ago for my grandfather passed away. Wow. It was my grandfather, my dad, myself, and then my uh, my two boys. So oh, that's wow. what four generations of Lopez right there. Wow! It's so a wow. blessing to be able to have that picture. Yeah. Oh man, I love that picture because it's like. It's it's I, I I actually got it, but I haven't made a portrait. I want to make a huge portrait, put it in my living room because that's four generations. Definitely, yeah. that's four. Just it's my grandfather, and my I hope dad, your, myself. Your yeah. sons know how valuable that is. Oh, they better know because I mean, we I try to distill that into their minds all the time. Like lo, uh, fam, loyalty and family is everything. Right. There's yeah. nothing else that's, that that could take that place. There's no money. There's no actions that you can do. You know. You know that are that are more positive than just have loyalty in the family. That's the that's the two most important things to me. I mean, we, I had these conversations all the time with my, my with my with my two boys and my daughters. Like, look, man, whatever you do, be loyal. If the other person screws you, you just get away from them people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're always gonna do negative when you hang around negative people. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just a force of habit. You don't want to be negative, but when you hang around negative people, you pick up their habits. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the best thing to do is get away from negative people. And if someone in your family's negative, have that talk. Like, hey, bro, I don't like what you're doing, bro. Calm down. Because I'm not that way. So if you want to be that way, you know what? You distance yourselves from that people. You know what I'm saying? It's just what you got to do. But, man, you know, that's something I tell people around me all the time. Family's over everything. Even if you're not even blood and I treat you like family, you family for life. I'm exactly. family. You know what I'm know saying? That. You family. Because, like I said, I, we've been, we've been doing each other forever. A long time, bro. You call me out of the blue. You call me out of the blue when I, I was here. He was here. And not only that, he came back and he been on time. He he different than all the rappers. No matter. <laughs> he here. Even, even That's why I'm glad I'm not a rapper. Man, you different, <laughs> man. Like, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the yeah, rappers yeah. is something else. They be coming late. Yeah. No, they, they be mm. tripping. But you a businessman, so I expect that out of him. Like, we going to try to be there early, you know? Yeah. Man, it's just a different but then that's why you end up being the leaders and the one got to make everything happen and yeah set an example yeah yep, you know what yep. i'm saying and, and i try to set an example with my kids and and everyone around me even when it comes on artists i let them know like look man being punctual is everything because there's a stigma for artists oh they're always late they're always late they're always smoking weed so when an artist doesn't smoke weed or is on time you're like whoa mm-hmm. <laughs> this guy's it's, different. It's different his guy's different but you know you sometimes you gotta set your own tone yeah definitely 
Man, um, so, so I, I I need your wife to talk to me, bro, because I, I heard that Jamaican <laughs> no, 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 no. She's going to talk to you anyway because she got questions. When I see something yeah, dealing it, with that well, phone, she's going to ask you questions because she didn't get to talk to you last time. We'll, we'll let her talk the whole interview, okay? <laughs> I heard that Jamaican accent. It's I was serious. like, whoa. And the funny thing, when I talk to a lot of people, they don't ever hear it till, you know, the more I talk, yeah. they hear it. Uh, but yeah. like I'm talking to you, you'll hear the accent. But if I'm talking to somebody who is Jamaican, yeah, you'll come hear out strong. an oh. even worse accent. Oh, I already know. I got a friend of mine. He's got a store. He's got a clothing store right behind me, and he's Jamaican. You know him. He just mm-hmm. got here a couple of years ago, so he's got that strong accent. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what? What'd you say? <laughs> yeah, that's What'd the you way say? it be, man. So last time we didn't get to ask him about certain, you you would ask him different questions than what mm-hmm, we asked him. Mm-hmm. So give him your spiel. I know how you come. Um, just no, I was I was gonna ask like, how many artists do you have right now? I mean, right now, all I've all I've always had was DSR. Those are are my artists. You know, T Town Music, Jimmy's Group. You know, myself, whatever. You know, my cousin Trini's still around. So we're all partners with DSR. That's for life. That's like. SUC, you know, the guys can go several ways. Someone can pass away. It's still going to be SUC, just like Wu-Tang Clan. You know, they're not dropping no albums, but there's always Raekwon representing. You know, you got Redman representing. It's the same thing with DSR. DSR is always going to be family. It's always going to be the only and official artist of mine. Now, other artists that I work with, those are artists that I manage or they go through the marketing company, Jim Music Group. And I work with a lot of different artists, but they're, they're not my artists. You know okay. what I'm saying? So they have their own labels, their own managers. So what's the difference between you working with an artist and it's your artist? Do you get more incentive when they're your artist? Of course, to- of course. So let's say let's say I sign you to my label and I, I sit at recording studio and we record albums. Now those masters are mine because I paid for everything. You get you know, you get your percentage. Usually what I do when I work with a lot of artists that I want them to really be part of my family, let's say I can pay you as soon as you get in the studio, say, Look, man, uh, you wanna get on those records, I'm gonna pay you a thousand bucks for twenty minutes of your time mm-hmm. and we're gonna go record that record. That, that record's mine. And then there, there might be some artists like, yo, I need a thousand plus I need ten points on, on the back end, which is, you know, publishing and I'll give you that. But 90% of that record is still mine. 10% is yours. Now, that's my artist that I'm working with. That's uh, Because you know. that's your rules. Because I know that some people, when they um, go sign on to somebody, they come and say, okay, well, the master's is mine. I'll sign with you, but I'm keeping my own master's. Only, it's rare, rare. It's probably 5% of artists in the world that have that. Wow. Okay. That's, that's why that's Prince great. had to fight it for so right, long. Right. Michael Jackson had to fight it for so long. You don't get that option. I mean, you got to understand, if I'm a billion-dollar company and you're an up-and-coming artist, you're like, I want to keep my master's. I'm like, bye. <laughs> bye. I'm, I'm making a billion dollars a year. Right. Who are you? Right. Now, if you want me to make you the million-dollar artist, I get 60, you get 40. The master's are still mine, but you're getting 40%. That's mm-hmm. still a good deal. And some people are like, nah, man, screw that. That's a bad deal. It's not a bad deal. Uh, I think we talked about this. I don't know if we talked about this here, but people talk to me like, yo, Post Malone has got a bad deal. He's got a 360 deal. I'm like, okay, 360 deal is however you want your 360 deal to be. All deals are not the same deal. Now, when he first got into his label deal with, I mean, he's got his own label, but when he signed to a major distributor or major label, they're like, hey, we're going to put millions of dollars behind you, but we're going to give you 40. We're going to take 60. Cool. Now, at that time, Post Malone was probably making a million a year, probably, coming up. Now, right now, he's making $50 million minimum a year. Mm. So, why is three sixty a bad deal? Right. <laughs> not a bad he went deal from making a million dollars to $50, to $50 million. million dollars. So, it's not a bad deal. It's just, it's just how you structure your deal. Every deal is different. Right. People, people put the word three sixty like, oh, that that's a bad deal. Right. No, right. it's not a bad deal. You know what I'm saying? It just depends on what is all but, included. Yeah. Exactly. So I got you. I got it's, you. Like, it's like... Our, our deal, T-Town Music, we dropped albums for seven, six years by ourselves. So we owned 100% of everything. We did everything ourselves. But when we signed the Universal deal, we signed a subsidiary deal, which was Universal slash Republic slash T-Town Music. Mm-hmm. So Republic and Universal, Universal is a distribution. Republic was the actual label. So Republic, the deal that, I, that, I, that we structured was 50-50. That's a good deal. Take it or leave it. Mm-hmm. Because we're already making millions a year. Right, right, so it's right. like... You, you want the Texas market? We'll give it to you at 50% cost. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing a 60-40 where I'm getting 40. Do you have a lot of people walk away from it and say, no, they're not going to do it? No. 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 He, he I, made that deal. I actually had three labels that wanted to do it. We just went, went on with the most money. Uh, we had EMI at the time. Virgin uh, wanted it. And then there was, I don't even remember the other label, but 
Universal came with the most money, of course, because they are they are the They're biggest bigger. company. Yeah, right. they got man Everywhere. hundreds and hundreds of yeah. subsidiaries. Yeah. So us being a part of their subsidiary was like nothing, like peanuts. Yeah. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, people don't understand. Whatever money they're giving you, they can write it off at the end of the year. Wow. So we did our deal in 2005. So the money they gave us up front, plus whatever they spent, you know, putting Tuck's album together that first year, they wrote it off by the end of December. Mm -hmm. So when the new year came out, we started working on, on Tum Tum's record. That was a whole new year. And then you write that off at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So you know, when, when a company's making a billion dollars, they're probably writing off probably 10 million, 20 million. They're writing That's off. How, yeah, right, so right, it's like, right. It's nothing. So, but for us to be a part of that movement, regardless, it's an experience. It's a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And people don't feel like, oh, y'all got screwed, whatever. No. I said, bro, it's a lesson. How many people can get signed with use Universal? A lot of people don't even get can. signed. Yeah, a lot. We were lucky. Um, it took a lot of labels 10 years to get signed in Texas, up to 10 years. How long did it take you to get signed? Four years. Wow. We got signed. DSR got signed in four years. Now, the How deal was happen? the deal was with T-Town. So, okay. T-Town was the umbrella over DSR. But T-Town, as the label who put out DSR, DSR came out 2001, October 25th, 2005, we signed a deal, mm -hmm. the fastest. Every artist in Texas, if you go back to look at, I don't even want to call names, but you, you, call, you look at everyone's deal in Texas, it took all of them 10 years ago with the major label. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we were all making the same amount of money. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, we, we are making independent money. So it's like we could take, we could have took a couple more years and say, you know what? We'll come back at you in 2010. But we knew, we knew there was going to be a time that the Texas movement was going to fade out. So we like, you know what? Let's take the money. Let's work with them. Let's do our thing on the side anyway. And if it doesn't work, we, can, we still got our thing on the side. And that's basically what happened. You know, the deal wasn't structured right because... Universal had split up into Motown and Republic, and we didn't know when we signed our deal. So, every, all my connections that I had at Universal, I didn't know. I don't know that when it, when when it split to a change, like the radio people went to Motown, the promotion and marketing uh, department went to Motown. So we're at Republic. Mm -hmm. So I go back to Universal to go say hi to all my friends. Like, yo, man, we're gonna do this big old promotion marketing deal. They're like, Joy, we can't work with you because there's a there's a huge. Uh, how you say position? There's a big, there's a big uh, fight going on at Universal with Motown and Republic, Republic. Mm -hmm. and whoever has the best records of the year are gonna win. You know, under Universal. So Motown was beefing with Republic, and we're on Republic side. And I'm like, who's on our side? We got a, uh, it's us, and we got Little Mama, we got Three Doors Down, we got a uh, that girl, uh, the, the one who passed away, and I think her name was Angie. It was uh, she had the black hair, had a song from the '60s. I Oh, not 60s. Now. No, it, it was, she was a new art, but she had that sound of the 60s. The she passed away? I yeah, she passed. Aaliyah, but it's not no, Aaliyah. no, no, no. This Aaliyah. was a recent artist. This is a recent artist. This artist came out like in 2004, 2005, but she passed away like a couple years ago. She died at a young age. She really? was a young girl. Yeah, she was huge. I got to figure out who that is. How does that song go? Da, 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 da. Oh, man, I, I got to look up that song. But yeah, she, yeah, yeah. she had black hair. Beautiful. She sang. She, she was real bluesy, little jazzy. Man, man I got to figure out who you're talking about. God, and what she didn't run with no dudes, just her. It was just her. So we were on that side. Okay. And then we looked at the competition at Motown. Chameleon had the number one record on the radio, mm -hmm. Riding Dirty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It. So all, when they were dealing with rap, they're, man, it, the whole team was pushing Riding Dirty. And so over here, I was like, well, who's our marketing guys? We don't have none. Wow. We're a new company, Republic, and we're going to build our new team. George, just keep doing what you're doing. But I'm under the machine. Where's the machine at? <laughs> yeah, There's yeah, no yeah. machine right now. The right. machine went to Republic. They're working Chameleonaire's record. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. So I go to my radio guy, uh, you know, uh, <sighs> Troy Marshall, and I say, Troy, man, I need you to work my record. But he's like, bro, I can't touch your record. I'm, I'm pushing the shit out of Chameleonaire's mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm. And I would get fired over here if I'm dealing with anybody on y'all's end because wow. there's, there's a big beef big going company. on. Right. You know, it was Celia Rome who had Motown, and I was with Monty and Avery Lippman, who were the president and vice president of Motown. So they were having some beef going on, and uh, I couldn't use none of my friends that, that I knew for years. And, and if y'all don't know who Troy Marshall is, he's the one who, who's been working Yellow Beezy's record this whole time wow. nationally. Really? So if it wasn't for Troy Marshall, Yellow Beezy's record wouldn't, wouldn't be out there. Because, I mean, Troy Marshall's a beast in radio. He know how to do so it. He knows how to do it. So, you know, you know, shout outs to the Yellow Beezy's team. They got a great guy working the record. That's dude. what's up. So, you know, usually when you got, when you got, people are like, oh, how can you get on the radio? You know, who do I got to pay? And what I got to, like, bro, you got to hire you a radio quarterback. Wow. One of the best. And he is, is the, the best. best. 
So, I mean, we got some in Dallas, too, that I would love to work with, too. But at that time, you know, I was trying to go after him, and we couldn't get him. We had a few guys that we, we tried to work with. But like I said, the label was just like they just couldn't compete with Motown, the, the, the label Republic. They could not compete. So we, we were lost out in sea for a while. So did you? what's the craziest thing you did when you got your deal? Craziest thing you did with the money. Something real throw Man, it off. you know what? The we, craziest thing. We Don't celebrated. Play. That night we celebrated. We went there's a steakhouse, the best steakhouse in the United States. It's wow. called the Warehouse. Okay. If Where is that? It, it's on the uh I think it's the Lower East Side. It's in Dallas? No, 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 it's in New York. Oh, we New were in New York, York so that okay. night. So that was Universal. Yeah. Because he said the best steakhouse in the world. In I'm the like, world. This like, to be Texas, I'm right? Like, what, what, we would think that would be Texas. That? I would think too, but this 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 supposed to be in, in this New York. steakhouse been there since 1889. Yeah, because that's the oldest city. Oldest that's city. That's why. So that where it's called was the warehouse. Was it really warehouse. good? It was off the chain. <laughs> the, the shrimps were bigger than my hand. No. Each shrimp was bigger than my hand. Wow. So for advertisers, we had a centerpiece, a, like a four-piece centerpiece like this. There's just like a, like a waterfall with just shrimps. And we took pictures of it, and it was like shrimps were bigger than my hand. Wow. And like I said, we didn't even look at the bill to the end of the night. So that, <laughs> that was the craziest thing. So we ordered that as an appetizer. Of course, as the artist, our entertainment lawyer, and... And that's it. So it was the artist, the CEO's entertainment lawyer. So it's probably eight of us there, nine mm. of us there. The bill came seven grand. Wow. So that seven was the grand. craziest and probably the stupidest Still thing we've ever done. done. <laughs> seven I grand. was so mad. I mean, I mean, because the food was great. Off the bat, it's an but experience. Seven. That you can it, talk it was an experience. Forever. Yeah. Well, you I'm I'm going mean? back to New York next week, so we're gonna, gonna go, go back. There? Yeah, we're gonna go there. <laughs> me and me and my boys are gonna go there. We're gonna hang out. Yeah, we're gonna hang out, but we're gonna be smarter. We're not gonna order crazy like that. No. But that's a good time. So let me ask you. Um, you deal with so many different artists and so many different people, and you seem like the person who manage everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with all these different personalities and get everybody on the, to, to, to be cooperative? Well, it, it's, it's different. It's, everything's a lot different than what it used to be. Now, DSR, people could say whatever they had to say because I was dealing with six or seven different personalities, but I never had no problems with DSR. It was so easy because I could just, I could work with everybody. And, and believe me, everybody has seven different personalities, mm -hmm. but these artists these days, they think they're entitled to everything. So when I work with artists these days, it's one or two artists on a monthly basis, and it comes down to money. If you're not going to pay it, I'm not going to deal with the headache. So now it's like my price is like, yo, this is my price. If you can pay it, I'll deal with your bullshit. But if I got to deal with it more than that, I'll just drop you, bro. I ain't got time. Mm. That's why I'm not signing none of these artists. I just work with them. And when I say work with them, I do more artists developing. Like They're like, George, I got a record. What do I need to do next? Okay, we're gonna sit down. We're gonna set up your mo your uh, marketing and promotions. We're gonna set up studio time to clean this record up because the record sounds okay. We're gonna clean it up. You know, we're gonna mix mix and match it with a person that's better and make it sound uh, better. We're gonna send it to all the DJs. We're gonna meet all the DJs. We're gonna do drops for the DJs. We're gonna do walkthroughs with the DJs. And we're talking about from radio to podcasters to clubs. So we're gonna actually work these records how we used to work these records. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's what they're paying me for because I already got my contacts. I'm basically just hooking them up with my contacts. So, but, you know, I've had some artists that I had to cut off, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Just because, you know, I, I have an artist that, that just started rapping a year ago. He's like, yo, well, I'm not opening it for Rick Ross or Boosie. I'm like, bro, you know, they charge for that. You know, promoters charge, oh, my music's good. Bro, every artist says their music is good. Yeah. Your music is okay. Yeah. It's not good enough to be like, yo, this guy's going to be the next jay-z or something you know what i'm saying so it's, it's just crazy but i you know i i deal with different personalities all the time with these new artists and like i said that's why i'm lucky and i'm in a position that i can pick and choose who i want to work with yeah yeah you, because there is a lot of personalities out here but you got the experience and the history behind you to where people should respect you if you're coming at them with something but i know you say they yeah, don't respect they don't care they don't care yeah. bro. But Air is it worth dealing with them? It's not worth. That's why I don't really deal with them. I mean, right now I got one artist that I work with. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah, somebody one. new. And just you see no, he's naming you. He, he's 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 a, a uh, original house member of Swisher House. Okay. Really? He, he just got out of jail. He's been locked up for like thirteen years. Wow! And he had a big record what was before his name? AD. So he AD, have AD a lot of good, um, music right now. He's got up. great music. Yeah, because he's been locked up that time. He should have been writing and writing. Oh, and he's writing. got an album ready to go. He just dropped his new single. We just it's on our it's on our gym music group. We're promoting it. It's called uh, "Crawling on Gray" featuring Paul Wall. If you look wow. at the videos, Paul Walls, Michael Watts, and him on the video. It's Houston with all the slabs and everything. I mean, you ba you basically you 
even though it's 2021, you go back in time to 2001 when you hear this record. It's wow. just it's one of those classic Houston records. So are you just working with him or are you signed him? No, no, I'm just working with him. Now, it's crazy because before he got locked up, I actually, I didn't sign him, but I actually did an album with him. So I have an album underneath my label, t Town Music, with him, and then that's when he got locked up. Wow. But it's still cool. You that's know what I'm saying? Cool. We, we're family. Like, we talked, we corresponded back and forth while he was locked up. Yeah. And, Don't you, know, you just hate that? Because I've seen or heard about so many cases where some are newer and upcoming, and you see the promise. You see how good they can be. Mm-hmm. But then they get in trouble, and they're gone for... Well, Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke was going to be the king of New York. Yeah, he was. I mean, in six months, he was on top. Yeah. And then at his six, at his seventh, mar- seventh month mark, they killed him. He was with Bobby Smurdy and them crew, yeah. crew, wasn't he? Yeah, he was part of that crew. You know what I'm saying? That's so, such a shame. you know, he was, you know, Bobby Smurdy wasn't out yet, so he was just like working his way up. As soon as he got to the top with 50 cents, they kill him. Yeah. yeah. Now it's done. So now we got to wait on Bobby Smurdy now. Now he's out. He got to get see, back. See what he's going to yeah. do. You know what I'm saying? I just don't see nobody doing what Pop Smoke would have done. Yeah, the momentum. Like right now, the closest thing is CJ right now. He's got that Whoop D record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that, the he's thing. like the closest New York record that's crossed over worldwide. Because you know, New York music is different. Yeah. So if we're we're not hip hop heads and down in South. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're more of the Southern than anything. Correct. What do you like the most? Do you like? Okay, yeah, I know. Man, no, hold on, hold on. I know you are about, here man. in the South and no, you deal really with a lot of the Southern rappers. But because I've met some DJs who like, oh, well, I'm here, but I do like up north music. Of course. So which one do you like the best? Possible was my favorite artist last year before he got killed. My favorite last year. Last year. Last year don't now he passed away. <laughs> so it's like, eh, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? It's like right. I can't put my hopes in someone who just passed. Right. I have to move on to someone who's hot now and that, I, that I'm feeling them. So I'm feeling CJ right now. I'm feeling uh Poo Shiesty right now. He's with oh, Gucci, yeah. man. Yeah, Fujiano's pretty yeah. good. Fugiano He's hot. hot. Kevin Gates, you know, it, it, it sometimes it's jamming, sometimes it's not. Exactly, it, it just depends. Because exactly. sometimes, you know, you know, I think the last album he was uh, everything about Allah. Now this year he's all Puerto Rican. So it's like whatever he whatever he <laughs> is this feel. month. It's like, what are you feeling, bro? You were black in the hood uh, from New Orleans on one album, and then you like a lot in the middle Middle yeah. East, and now you come back with this new album like Puerto Rico, this Puerto Rico, that everything's Puerto Rico. So it just it just depends, man. Some of these artists they come and go with me. So, so let's get over to the podcast. You know he does a podcast, so let's talk about that for a second before we get out here. Doing what you're doing is this what you always wanted to do I've, ever I, since you were a kid? Man, I got a mouthpiece. My mom and dad. My mom was like. You know, you could sell dirty underwear. Mm-hmm. You know, people would buy it again. No, you know, you, even you though it's dirty and used, them. they would buy it. Because I can just talk to people. You know what I'm saying? I can I can relate to people. You know, if they're having a bad day, I can relate to that. If they're having a great day, I can relate to that. You know, er- everyone's got an opinion, so I can relate to everybody because I'm open-minded it's to everything. It's funny how the kids are because his brother is not, not even nothing like that. Really? My brother? No, my brother's different. My are brother's you the like, only one totally in your family different. who's like you? Uh, kind of. My sister's a little bit like me, but she's a little bit like my brother, too. So we're all different. We're all yeah. different. Yeah, your sister's different, but your brother, you would think, too, oh, yeah, he's going to be nothing. Totally he's, he's more quieter. Quieter. You know, he's, he's, he's like my he youngest like, son. Is he like your dad, though? Your dad be chilling. Yeah, man. no, my dad's real quiet. Yeah, we my should fool. He's trying to whoop me up over there. <laughs> Try? Yeah, I think he did whoop me. He, he whooped you. Man. You tell him I still I don't want think to anybody rematch. beat my dad. Your <laughs> dad's something else, man. We used to be over there shooting all the time. My dad taught me how to play pool. Yeah, we used to. That was what we done over there like long yeah. time ago for years i used to be in there with him so when did you realize you wanted to do this business i've been wanting uh, in the music business or the yeah. podcast music music uh i've been in music all my, all, my, all my life uh my uncle was a dj back in the 70s and yeah. early 80s so you know he's a couple years older he's probably 15 years older than me so when i was eight years old i'd go to his dj room and he didn't let nobody in his dj room nobody but i was the oldest nephew he had so he's like Come, come and you. sit down. Don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't even bother me. Sit down. Because he would practice before Friday nights because he had to get ready. He'd buy some new vinyl, clean it up, you know, get a mix of some funk, you know what I'm saying, Parliament, Rick Jane, whatever. He'd kind of just mix it up. I'm like, oh, man. I, and I was eight years old, and I was like, can you show me? He's like, nah, you're too young. You're too young. So I just sit in there, and he, you know, he had the, the DJ speakers, the whole DJ set up in his bedroom. He had a little space where his, his mattress was, and that was it. Everything else was DJ speakers and lights, and he had the glow in the dark. 
uh, posters and the fishnet hanging down. Mm -hmm. I mean, he had that real that 80s room. They were popping back then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was what was up. I wanted to be a DJ. So I told my uncles, man, I want to learn. He's like, all right, I'm going to teach you when you get a little bit older. So about nine, nine and a half, ten, he started showing me, okay, this is what you do. This is how you clean a record. This is how you mix. This is what this is. This is a mixture. This is a pitch control. So he started showing me slowly but surely. Mm. And and that, I just fell in love with it. Wow. And plus, I've, I've been a music guy all my life because of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would always just sit in, the, in his room and just listen to music he played. And he played great music. And then one thing about Hispanics, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody, but we played not just clubs. We did quinceañeras. And, and when you do quinceañeras. That's a big old party. All, all you got you to gotta play it all. You got to play country, Spanish, exactly. Mexican, you know, hip hop, old school, oldies. So my uncle was practicing all that because he had a 15 or a wedding. And then he had a club gig. So my, my mind was everywhere with all this music. I'm like, mm -hmm. what is that? And what is this? And what is that? And he's like, oh, this is a new Rick James. Who's that? And you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the old... Uh, you know, Chuck Berry, you know, why are you playing this? Well, you know, I'm going to have some older people. I got to play that. This is a hit. Mm -hmm. oh, what is this? Well, this is a new artist named Prince. Oh, really? Man, he looks cool. He would show me the old owls off, long hair and <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like he was just... He was just showing me. I was in school. And you, know you were what I'm eager to learn because you were asking all these questions. I was so asking questions. And I'm not pretty sure I got on his nerves, but he was very patient with me, which he has no patience. My uncle does not have no patience. He's like me. I have no patience I mean, He made me think like about me. That, that little dude that was at the Magic always, the little dude to right, be DJ. Right. You done seen him. It's a little kid. He he, grow, he growing up now. Yeah. That was but years. Was we so would see him at Magic. Young, probably about... 11 or 12 He did he, that ever since At Magic He be at In Vegas mm -hmm. Every time we go Baby G That's him That's my boy Doing yeah. tricks and everything That's him He, he know He hit it right on the yeah. nail so Baby smooth. G yeah 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 I know man Like I said I was blessed Like I said uh, I, So I was I always want to be part of the music Business uh, But how hard is it To start your own Like for a person Who is listening Who You know Whether be a rapper Or Inspiring to own Their own label Or something like okay. that because you're successful. You're very successful at Thank what you. you did or what you're doing. Um, how can they learn from your mistakes? How can they be successful in that same career? Okay. So to be successful, you have to learn lessons. Don't say, I'm taking a loss. I'm taking a loss. I'm, I mean, you can't be negative all the time. Everything you do, I just learned. I just learned. You lose money here, I just learned. You took a hit here, I just learned. You got to kind of keep everything positive but if you take everything it's like damn man i don't even want to do this no more i just lost 10 grand you're not going to be successful because you're giving up already you're giving up i never gave up i worked a daytime a job i worked construction with my dad and so whatever i made between 6 a.m and two o'clock okay my dad had me that schedule there i'd come home shower open up my store at three o'clock and this was in 1994 when i just opened up my retail shop so i was at my shop from four to eight thirty selling cds i might have made some money i made it not net, my net made no money that day but regardless every time i got a paycheck i would put it into my store and i would be broke my dad my dad's like you broke i said i'm broke He's like i just paid you 500 dollars this week i said i'm broke i just stocked up my store but you're not selling nothing i said i'm gonna sell i'm gonna sell so it, eventually you know i started you selling cds faith. yeah i had faith in what i was doing right and that's one thing about these artists these days they don't have faith in what they're doing and the reason i said people say oh man you're wrong okay for example when an artist comes to you, what's the first thing they say? Sign me, Lopez. Mm -hmm. Sign me. Well, I got to sign you. You got confidence in your music? You're going to sign yourself. Right. Where's your money? Right. Nah, George, you, you put a million dollars into me, we're going to split that together. <laughs> How are we going to split my money? That's already my money. That's, right. I get that all right. the time. You know what I'm saying? So that. when they see somebody with little money, hey, man, sign me. Nah, bro, that means you don't have confidence in yourself. How true is the statement, you have to spend money to make money? That's very true. That's very, very true. So the uh, the way, the example that I follow was Master P. I, I got to work with him for a few years, and his thing was uh, make a dollar out of 15 cents. So that means if I'm putting $15, I'm going to make $100? i am down. If I make $100, if I put in $100, i am going to make $1,000? That, that's what I looked at. These days, they don't look at that. No. These days, man, I need to get signed right now. Yeah. Who's going to sign me? They're hitting they all these labels. Give, they don't want to give anything but get a lot back. Exactly, get a lot back. And then when they, let's say they make half a million. Man, that label screwed me. Mm -hmm. What are you talking <laughs> about? You just made half a million. You need to spend not one dime. Not my talent. Man, your talent ain't nothing, bro. Right. It's just like it's just like water and cement mix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cement mix is there. When you add the water, it becomes cement. Yeah, yeah, but without yeah. the water, you just cement mix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, it takes one to help the other. 
So if you're an artist, you need a label or distribution to help you out to get your music out there to become worldwide artists. Mm -hmm. People like Travis, who went with Kanye, people like Post Malone, who went with the, the label, they all learn. You got to take a little hit to, to make something. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. You got to take, you know, you got to give a little to make a little. Because I got it's a question. so hard, though. I because... got a question for you. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. well, how is this George Lopez name versus the other George Lopez either made a good impact or a bad impact on you? Uh, on, on who you are. There, there's, there's you a, see what I'm saying? There's a negative and a positive I know because my name Elvis, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Yeah, <laughs> I can relate. And when, and when people look up George Lopez, the first what one I, I, we, up. we've been looking yeah. you up all week. We look up. I, I think I'll never beat that guy. <laughs> 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 that guy has got a, a but star you come Hollywood. Up, oh, you pop up Dallas. Yeah, George Lopez. That's yeah. what you have to do. You have to you have Dallas. to type in Dallas George Lopez or DSR or DSR or T Town Music. You're gonna have to put that up. So what's the negative? What's the positive? That, is that the negative? The the negative is all these these guys when they say hey, we're gonna go meet George Lopez, they're like the comedian. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know the T-Town or the DSR George Lopez. Right. They don't know because they're too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so one thing about the uh, the new age guys, they don't they don't do no homework. <laughs> yeah. I, I met guy. I met a guy last week. He's like, dude, I've been in Dallas all my life. I never heard of you. I heard of George Lopez, a comedian, but I never heard of you. Yeah. But that's like, so what crazy. do you do? Like, because what? you have the, the younger people. They stay on this phone all the time. Yeah, and you can research anything and anybody from this phone. Like, why not? Okay, so the thing is, why are you gonna why are you gonna change the channel when you got it on BET all day? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, if, that, that's the, it's like that. you got yeah. channel four, you got channel eight, eleven, but everyone in, in Pleasant Grove watch Bounce because that channel's for free on K on Time Warner. Yeah. So you're watching Bounce, you're watching all those old movies all day. You're not gonna get up. It's the same thing with yeah. YouTube. All these YouTube artists are coming up. Way before my time, way before DSR time. So those YouTube artists are coming up every minute. There's a new artist from from some. So, so they're looking at all the, so new, looking at all the new artists. They're not even changing the YouTube channel. They're not going. They're not typing in George Lopez, DSR Dallas, you know, 2001. They're, no, they're just next. Future, NBA, Drake, Future, NBA, Drake. That's all they're seeing, the repetitive artists. Or Joe Blow just came out today, and he's got green hair with gold grill and doo-doo braids and they're going. They're looking at that. It's it's entertaining. I just so. think about that new uh tra that new uh the song by Old Town Road Boy. I was just nah, about was, to ask him. I, was, I haven't heard I was the song. You seen? I haven't the heard the song. I ain't even seen the video, it. but I heard about it. It's satan. You know, satanic. Yeah. Man, you reading my mind? Why are you in my head? Get out my head. I'm just asking the question that people. Want I just know. thought about that. It's I crazy. We, I had a conversation with my son yesterday about that because. My, Did you see it, Shamar? My son's into Trippy Red and Little Uzi, mm -hmm. and they're rock stars into the the satanic stuff. But they don't take it that far, and they know when they get to a pop stage, they got to back away from that. Yeah. Now Nas, he got he jumped into the pop stage. Now he's going backwards. He's actually hurting his career by doing all that negative stuff. Yeah, it's, because it's so crazy. Because it was a guest of ours who told us about it. Mm -hmm. Because it pops up on your phone. It came. It came up, but I don't really look at him. All negative stuff's gonna pop up on your phone right. every second. It every, came up that Nas X, um, whatever. But I didn't look at it. Yeah. But the our guest, he's like, um, he was told us about it. He's like, no, y'all need to watch this video. Yeah, because like, your kids gonna watch first, it. At first, we're like, yeah. no, we don't want to see. We don't want to see nothing satanic. Yeah, but yeah, then. Yeah. He made a good point. He's like, let me tell you, these young kids, because they're on these phones and on YouTube, mm -hmm. they're watching this. They're watching it. Because I even asked him, the first thing I asked him, I said, tell me how many views it has. It's been out one day. Yeah. It had not over, even a day. Not even a day. It had over 12 million yeah. Oh, yeah. views. And I'm like, are you serious? And I know that it's all these kids who these are watching These kids it. are into anything. But how can you watch? To me, I, I looked at him like, okay, that's satanic. It shows the devil it shows all sorts of stuff and i'm like how can you feel comfortable watching this thing i just thank god and supporting him i thank god my kids know know about god that they able to understand the they can see it one time says this is not for me they gonna right. know but my then you got these other know. kids who are their parents don't talk to their kids don't have them in church kids are failing skipping school those kids will be like man they're they're into it they're they're attracted to it for some yeah. reason but then there's kids that are smart who have great parents and they had their they got role models in their family. They're like, this is crazy. I'm not watching this crap again. Right. So yeah, 
it's going to happen. I mean, like I said, both of my kids watched it, and they were like, that's crazy. We're never watching that again. We're not even going to play Lil Nas again. You know, yeah. even, And even though he's got a new shoe, and the, the bottom of the shoe has the devil on it. and, and the, Yes. Yeah, you look, if you turn the shoe over, it's like, like, like a... Like, What's it's, wrong it's, with him? He's like, okay. This is what he said. Everyone's saying I'm gay. I'm going to go to hell anyway. So, oh, well, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to hell anyway. So that's the reason why. That's he did the reason it. he said it straight up. I'm doing it because everyone says I'm going to hell anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to deal with the devil. I'm with the devil. Y'all calling me a devil anyway because I'm gay. Okay. Who who call him a devil? Everybody who's who's against whoever whoever's homophobic. Against they're homophobic. saying. Yeah, but you got to listen. You, but you can't. You, you, you should can't be just listen to tune into what everybody say that's negative. Everyone about has you. opinion. It, you don't have to take it. Bro. That's right. It's but like then, okay. When I'm watching that, to me, I'm like okay. For him to be so bold and do something like that. You must be like a devil worshiper or something like that. that that's what came across to me. He, to me, that's just being weak. He's he, he's feeding into what people are telling him. Like you're gonna go to the devil, so you might as well just hang with the devil. Okay, cool. Wow. And that's not just if you're strong, you're gonna believe in what's right. I but, but I can't say stuff like that because you're like George. He has an opinion, so whatever he does, that's his opinion. Leave him alone. Okay. I'm not. I'm not going after. Him. I'm just answering a question when the people ask me. You manage artists. Uh -huh. How much say so does a manager have over an artist of what they? Put out. Um, put out because then he Not has really a manager much. as well. So how can they influence him with what he wants to do? Our, my okay, our situation was different. T Town Music, uh, I was the manager, and those are my artists at the same time. Mm -hmm. So my thing is, me and my cousin Trini, we talked about this is what we want from the guys. So I would sit down, and or he would sit. We would, we would all sit down and say, "Look, man, we want y'all to do this," and then they would come up with a uh, how you say. Um, like, well, we, we, we get that, but we, we want to do it like this also because this and this and that. And then we're like, okay, you know what? Two opinions, it works. So we always came to the middle on every situation. Always. But if you didn't like what they had to, to say or what they wanted to do, how does that work? We never got to that point. <laughs> That's why DSR, we've never got to that point. Now, it's a good I, relationship. It's a great relationship. Now, I got into that with other artists and they're like, I'm just going to do what I do, George, because this is my money anyway. I'm paying for my own, and I'm paying you. I said, okay, you know what? Put your stuff out. That's cool. I ain't got to work on it. I'm, I'm good. We're done. That's it. I can walk away from it. You know, because I'm like, dude, I got the years of experience. This is not going to be good, but I want to do it. Then do it. Just do it without me. I can do that when I manage different artists, and they go through my marketing company. But as far as DSR, it's like we always work to the middle of something like me and Trini wanted a certain look, a certain sound, and they wanted the same thing, but they wanted to switch it up, and we'd come to the middle and talk about it, and you know what? It makes sense. And at the end of the day, these are these are good guys. These are good guys. So it's like if they were, like, troublemakers, I'm like, bro, man, you're not fucking listening. You're hard-headed, da, da, da. But it wasn't like that with none of these guys. These guys, we all worked it out, and it made sense to, on their opinions, it made sense. One thing, me and Trini are older, are older than yeah, the artists, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we we value their opinion on everything, and we everything they wanted to do, they would bring it to like, man, we want to do this, we want to do that. We're like, all right, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. We had the money, we were the CEO. We're like, let's make it happen because at the end of the day, we want to keep the artists happy. And if the artist is happy because we're selling records, then we're happy because we're selling records. Now the artist got what he wanted, and we got what we wanted because he's selling records. It's a win-win situation for everybody. But when you, some people are like, they want to hold down the artists and don't let them have no, no opinions or no say so. They're actually hurting the artists because one thing about artists, real artists, they're great because they're artists. They're not just rappers. There's a huge difference between rappers and artists. That's true. So uh, when it, when it comes down to artistry, we kind of sit back. We're like, uh, you know what? It actually makes sense. Y'all are rare because y'all did a. Uh you guys are rare because it wasn't many people coming out of Dallas when you guys came out. No, not at our Rappers, time. Yeah, not no, at our time. That, that was the difference in them. Before us, like it was you. You had Pookie and Lucha before yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a rare thing, man. Yeah. It wasn't wasn't really a lot. Yeah, before us, you had Pookie and Lucha, and then before them, you had the Nemesis, Nemesis the Pimster, That's right. That's you right. You know, uh, Ron C, yeah, Trendsetter. Yeah. You know, you had those guys. You had Fresh Art Productions out of Pleasant Grove in South Dallas. Okay. You know, those are classic artists, and then of course, then everybody else started coming in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, the doors kind of wide open. I always go back to what Kiki J told us one time, and it, it made a lot of sense. She said, George, y'all came in way before y'all's time, way before y'all's time. He goes, y'all should have been, right now, y'all should have been like Post Malone right now. Exactly. But because y'all came in when there was no social media and y'all's music was way advanced, that's, that's why your music is timeless. Sense. 
It makes sense. But as far as being a, a huge artist like Post Malone and Travis, y'all not going to get it because y'all came in too early because there was no social media then. But your music is timeless. That's why your music has lasted 20 years no, no, on a radio. Like today, I heard South Side at least four times. Yeah. I heard Caprice music at least one to twice a day, every day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Those records, and then what other artists can say that in Dallas? That they, they get their records played on every station every day. Nobody. They can't. Mm -mm. And I, like I said, I, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not in competition with any artist. I respect all the artists. I'm just saying we were blessed to do what we did. did and, and, like, and like I said, Kiki J made a great... Uh, scenario on us. She's like, Joe, y'all just came in way before y'all's time. Definitely, man. I appreciate you coming, but I, I wanted to ask about the podcast. Hey, man, take I, your I just, time. What yeah, you want to ask? I just got I one. think she still got a question. No. no. Okay, She's okay. Done. She's done. It's over. What? Man, come on, man. It's no, over. Quit cutting her mic off, yeah, man. No. Come on, man. Golly. <laughs> no, the thing I wanted to ask you was how the podcast lifestyle. Okay. You know, you guys been at it longer than us, so I just was trying to say your feel on it. I like, I love it, bro. Love I, I, it. I love talking to artists. I love talking to uh, people that are actually making moves out there. There's a lot of people I don't know who they are. I got a great partner named Z Star, and she goes under Z Star Productions, Z Star Rock Productions, and uh, she brings attention to a lot of up and coming producers, engineers, uh, people in the entertainment business, and she brings them to her show. And I'm learning. Every day on every interview, I might know half the people that I do interview with, but the other half I don't know who they are. That's the but same it, thing. We and like with I it. said, people are like George, it's your show. I said no, it's our show. Yeah. So two heads are better than one. Yeah. Exactly. So when she has an opinion and she has an artist that she wants to bring to that she think is going to make our show better, let's do it. Yeah. I'm that type of person. I'm like, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Think. Yeah. And, and we and we all sit back and talk like, okay, why are we doing this and why are we do it? Okay, boom. That's why we're doing it. Let's wow. do it. But you know, the show has been great. Uh, I think we're up to 75 episodes already, and uh, we haven't we haven't published them all yet. We just had an issue with two of our episodes. Spotify, well, really Universal has taken them down because two engineers that we had on our show actually produce these records. So we, of course, every engineer, every producer that comes to our show, they bring music that they produce, and we play it. But I guess you got to let the label know because the label thinks we're stealing. Like, look, we had the producer mm -hmm. on our show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it wasn't cleared. It's you his music. No, so the I had to get the producers to hit email Universal. Like, look, bro, they just pulled our interview from you off of Spotify and Apple wow. Podcasts because they say you got to let them know. Wow. Oh, okay, cool. So now our two producers had to call Universal. I had to email them. There's a certain email you hit them up and they supposedly release it faster. We'll see. That's but. crazy. I I, th I think, like I said, we... We seeing we seeing different relationships building mm -hmm. between all this man. Oh yeah, and and it, and it's a great it's a great conversation starter, right? It's yeah. a network it's a network builder. It exactly. is this right here is exactly. a network builder because exactly. people you haven't talked to in a while, all of a sudden you're talking, you're to, talking them again. to them again. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You're exactly. meeting you're meeting new relationships. You're bringing back old relationships. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a growing it's a grow it's a growing thing. It, it's growing. You know your network's getting bigger and bigger, bigger, with, and bigger. with the listeners. Yeah, and, and there's listeners out there that really want to get involved with you. So I'm pretty sure they're emailing you or be want to be yeah, part of the show. Or asking you questions the to ask DM, the artist. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I just want to say, man, we wanted to invite you here to give you your roses while you are here with us so we could give them to you. Appreciate it. We that. wanted to give you this plaque. Uh, she usually do it over here, so we. Um, but I just appreciate you, man. We love you. Appreciate Boss it. Talk 101 loves George Lopez. Exactly. The real, the official George <laughs> Lope, the Lopez. The D Town. The D Town, T Town music, Lopez. DSR George Lopez. Let's get it. That'd hey, man, done, thank man. you so much, man. Appreciate we love it, bro. you, bro. Appreciate it. Thank Boss you. Boss Talk 101. Yeah. Definitely. George Lopez. Yes. Dallas George Lopez. Thank you. We at Boss Talk would love to present you this award to tell you thank you for all of your years of service in the music industry with T-Town Music, with DSR. Over 30 years is what we have. Is that correct? Definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. So it says what? In recognition of the work you have done in the music industry for over 30 years, T-Town Music, DSR, and this jockey industry, because that's where you started. Definitely so we appreciate. had to mention it. Thank you. We thank you and we appreciate you. I appreciate y'all. You approved, bro. We, no, appreciate we appreciate it. you, man. Thank you, thank you. We very gotta much. get the express. It was the acceptance speech. Give it to him. Uh, I'm not good at that. <laughs> I'm like I'm like like uh, what's the name uh, Al Pacino and Godfather. Yeah 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 yeah. I, I can't. I'm not good at speeches. Man, I just want to thank both of y'all for man. Bro. Man, I appreciate you after all these years. Thank Everything you. you done done, man. It, it, it's a no brainer. Appreciate it. Love Giving that. roses out while you here, bro. I see that, bro. I that's what we got to do. I appreciate so, that. So I think that's what going to set us apart. That was our deal. We thought we going to give awards to our people that deserve it in the city. Because that's good, people man. don't show appreciation. Yeah. Oh,